Good afternoon, dear students. Today we are going to discuss production of diphtheria toxoid. In the last lecture, we discussed about production of tetanus toxoid and anti-tetanus serum. Now let us discuss about diphtheria toxoid. Now diphtheria disease, the disease diphtheria was first recognized by Britannia in the year 1920, uh, sorry, in the year 1826. And he called, Britannia called it diphtherite. Why he called it diphtherite? The name diphtherite is derived from the tough, leathery pseudomembrane that is produced in the disease. Tough, leathery pseudomembrane kind of thing which is uh, produced in the disease. That is why the name diphtherite was given by Brittoni. The diphtheria bacilli was first observed and described by Klebs in the year 1883. The organism was first cultivated by Loeffler in 1884 on serum agar. In 1883, Rocks and Yersin discovered that the pathogenic effect of diphtheria uh, bacilli, that is Corinibacterium diphtheri, is due to the exotoxin that is produced by the organism. Okay. The causative agent of diphtheria disease is Corinibacterium diphtheri. Okay, and this organism is pathogenic because of the secretion of, a, of exotoxin, right? Organism is gram-positive, non-motile, non-sporulating, non-capsulated, pleomorphic bacilli, okay, pleomorphic. More than one kind of morphology is shown, okay? The rods are arranged, the rod of the bacteria are arranged in a typical palisade-like manner which gives it Chinese letter-like appearance, right? The organism shows the presence of metachromatic granules, which can be easily detected by Albert's stain. Okay, so uh, observing the metachromatic granule is one of the method of identifying the bacteria. The diphtheria bacilli are classified into three types, the gravis, intermediates, and mitis. These three strains, produce same exotoxin, but they differ in their clinical severity as far as disease is concerned. Okay, now the Gravis strain causes most severe type of diphtheria and produces maximum amount of exotoxin, say around 99%. The Mitis strain causes mild severity. The mitis strain produces a uh, disease of mild severity and lowest amount of exotoxin, while the intermediate one produces uh, intermediate severity in the disease. Okay. Though the three, three strains vary in the amount of antitoxin, they, uh, sorry, the amount of exotoxin they produce, but the qualitatively the toxin, okay, or the, uh, the toxin produced is similar in nature. Okay, only the amount varies and hence the severity of the disease varies. The exotoxin produced by diphtheria bacilli is protein in nature, of course, having a molecular weight of 62,000 daltons and it's a very potent exotoxin. Okay, now how to cultivate the organism? Corinibacterium shows a very poor growth on ordinary media and hence it requires enriched media for their growth. Like we can use Loeffler's serum slope, blood telluride agar or egg yolk agar, enriched medium. Production of diphtheria toxoid is divided into following steps. Preparing the inoculum, pre-production of exotoxin, toxoidation of the exotoxin, and testing the purity and potency. Now, how to prepare inoculum? As said earlier, the th three strains of Corinibacterium diphtheri, which are responsible for causing diphtheria, maybe gravis or intermediates or mitis. Okay, out of them, Gravis strain produces maximum exotoxin and hence it is used for uh, inoculum development or inoculum preparation. The strain is maintained by culture collection centers. Initially, they are collected on Loeffler serum slope. From this, they are transferred to blood telluride medium. It's a specific medium containing potassium telluride which favors the growth of diphtheria bacilli. The inoculum is built up in stepwise manner like we have studied. So Corinibacterium diphtheri gravis strain, we transfer a uh, look full of culture or say 20% uh, from one step to another step to the shaped culture flask containing blood telluride medium and then go on transferring 20% medium from a previous stage to the next stage and build up the inoculum. Go on increasing the quantity of broad culture. Okay. And finally, you have a glass fermenter with 
production medium and a definite amount of inoculum is added. Now incubate it for six to seven days, maintaining the pH to around 7.2 to 7.8. And the temperature, of course, like 34 to 37 degrees Celsius. And then this is how inoculum buildup is done. And once the definite amount or sufficient amount of coronary bacterium diphtheri culture is ready, okay, when the organism has multiplied larger amount or in the main fermenter, you have sufficient amount of broth culture. Now the organism secretes the exotoxin outside it's an exotoxin that means it is secreted out so the exotoxin is actually present in the broth medium okay so the first thing we need to do after uh, after sufficient amount of growth has occurred is separate the bacterial cells and the broth so that is generally done by centrifugation so cells are harvested and removed by centrifugation okay the next step is production of exotoxin. Once your inoculum buildup or culture is ready, we go for exotoxin. Now, in the production of the, uh, exotoxin or during the production of diphtheria toxoid, fermenters made up of glass or aluminium are used because uh, we don't go for uh, steel containers because iron is toxic. The fermenter is first sterilized and then production is carried out. Medium specially designed the medium is specially designed which will favor the growth of exotoxin production okay so the medium contains beef extract yeast extract maltose sodium lactate alanine magnesium sulfate copper sulfate zinc sulfate nicotinic acid manganese chloride and pancreatic extract in some cases cysteine is also added to stimulate exotoxin production the medium is first sterilized and then pumped into the sterile fermenter to this we add 20 percent of the inoculum that we have done inoculum buildup so 20 percent of the inoculum is added to this main ferment uh, main medium which is supposed to be used for exotoxin production the pH is maintained, of course, in the range of 7.2 to 7.8. Optimum temperature required is around 32, uh, or the temperature increases around 34 to 37 degrees Celsius. Organism is aerobic, and hence continuous aeration is required, and continuous aeration should be done. Otherwise, toxin production may be hampered. Duration of fermentation may be around 6 to 7 days. Generally, toxin production starts after 48 hours of uh, inoculation and incubation. After exotoxin has been produced or after the, uh, you can say, incubation period of, say, six to seven days is over, what we do is toxoidation. Collect the toxin, collect the exotoxin, harvest the exotoxin, and go for toxoidation. So the fermentation media is harvested for the recovery of exotoxin. The toxin secreted by the organism is excreted out of the cell, hence it is present in the liquid phase. So the bacterial cells are first separated from the medium by centrifugation or by using the filter press. Separate the bacterial cells and remove them. The fermented broth so obtained contains exotoxin and hence it is subjected to purification. Generally, absorption method is used for separation of toxin from fermented broth. We go for absorption method to separate toxin from fermented broth. Exotoxin is highly potent and hence cannot be injected directly into person for antitoxin response. That is why there is a need of toxoidation. Okay, the exotoxin has two groups, haptophore group, which imparts antigenicity and toxophore group, which imparts toxicity, right? So what we need to do is during toxoidation, we have to remove the toxophore group. That means we remove, we carefully remove the toxin producing ability of the, the toxicity of the organism so that the uh, the preparation when injected into the body of patient should only stimulate antitoxin production. It should not cause any toxicity. That is why exotoxin is toxoided. That means exotoxin is treated with chemicals like formalin so that the toxicity is destroyed and the HAPTO4 group is retained, antigenicity is retained. Okay, so during toxoidation, the toxicity is destroyed. Hence, exotoxin is treated with chemicals like formalin to destroy toxicity. The detoxified product obtained is known as toxoid. It is also called as modified exotoxin having only antigenicity. Now, for synthesis of diphtheria toxoid, the exotoxin obtained is first treated with 0.2 to 4% formalin at alkaline pH for a period of three days. This detoxifies the toxin. The detoxified product is known as formal toxoid. 
it is pre precipitated the toxoid is precipitated by adding ammonium sulfate the precipitate is then separated by filtration it is then dissolved and diluted to required potency that is concentration by adding sterile saline it is then tested for purity and potency the same diluted toxin is tested for purity potency same thing which we follow for tetanus toxoid purity is detected by injecting the toxoid into suitable susceptible animal if no symptom develops toxoidation is proper if symptoms develop or the animal die that means detox detoxification is inadequate and the such condition the entire process of toxoidation is repeated okay potency is calculating the required amount of dose of toxoid to be injected so that anti toxin production is stimulated okay uh, after satisfying the purity and potency the toxoid is filled in ampules sealed lyophilized and labeled and uh, now you know that the label should indicate the date of manufacturing the date of expiry the condition of storage then amount of toxoid present dose to be administered name of the toxoid it's uh, you can say potency dose to be administered amount of toxoid present in the vial and so okay so the first step is inoculum build up once you have inoculum ready you go for fermentation fermentation is generally done in a glass fermenter maintain the incubation temperature ph and aeration rate then separate the cells by centrifugation of filter press and take out the filtrate the filtrate contains exotoxin the exotoxin is inactivated and converted into formal toxoid by treating with formalin okay the, once the formal toxoid is ready it is precipitated out by ammonium sulfate then added to buffer solution dialyzed in distilled water so that the ammonium sulfate is removed and what you get is the pure toxoid it is again filtered diluted to desired potency or concentration using buffered saline then standardization adjuvants are added control testing purity testing is done and then ampule filling lyophilizing packaging and marketing of the toxoid is done so that is all about diphtheria toxoid production